Okay. <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> I like, followed it. I followed it, Shane. Come on. Yeah. You know, did you paste? <laughs> I, 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 can you? Can you? Can you? You know, uh, uh, repeat that back to me in a language I might understand. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Behind the Lines, the only podcast purifying the sports betting industry. Remember to like, download, subscribe, follow us on all the socials at In Play Live. And if you want to see what In Play Live is all about behind the scenes, we've got that promo code for you. That's Behind the Lines, all caps. All right, a really, really cool show for you here. Super excited. As always, we've got the host, uh, my co host, Andrew Pace, founder of In Play Live. But with us today, we've got two very special guests. We have Andrew Young, co-founder of the SX Network, which includes SX Bet. And we've got his colleague, Kay Carson, head of marketing here with us as well. Welcome to both of you. Thanks so much for joining the show. Yeah, thanks for having us. Excited to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we're both really excited uh, uh, to have you uh, both on the show here because uh, we've done a little bit of uh, conversation where we've had a little bit of conversation around exchanges. We've had another exchange on the show, but SX bet seems like a very large exchange and I don't want to uh, uh, take too much away, but Andrew, uh, tell us a little bit about SX bet. What is it? How does it work? We know it's an exchange and that's kind of a newer concept still in the North American space. So, so just give us sort of a, a broad overview of what it is you guys are doing over there. Yeah, totally. Um, so SX is our mission is to lower the VIG for sports betting uh, down to less than 50 basis points. So less than 0.5% is our goal, which is effectively a uh, over 10x reduction from the industry standard of, you know, five to 7%, which seems egregiously high for, for most people that kind of get into the space. And what's unique about SX is that we actually, um, have built the entire backend on a blockchain. So I can kind of go into, um, I'm not sort of totally familiar on how sort of crypto native the, the, your audience is. So I'm happy to go <laughs> into like what a blockchain is. <laughs> we'll um, find out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's, a, but the idea is essentially like by being built on a blockchain, it allows for massive cost reduction, uh, which we pass fully to users. It also allows for a fully transparent and fully fair uh, marketplace, which I think is incredibly important, especially for this sort of industry. Um, and it also has a number of other really cool sort of benefits. Um, you know, the platform is non-custodial, so you keep control of your of your essentially your assets in your own wallet at all times. Um, and uh, and then finally, which we can kind of dive into more, um, it is open source, so it allows other sort of developers to build on top of what we've built um, and allows essentially the community to really sort of run as well as own uh, the project, which I think to me is the most important thing. Uh, okay. So um, I'll, I'll just sort of start off by saying, you know, you're asking about our audience and how familiar they are with crypto and, and the space, you know, uh, some of them more familiar than others. I think, you know, there's probably some some people in here who have very little experience and others with a significant amount of experience using crypto in the sports betting space or, or just have a, a, a ton of experience. But I'll just, you know, sort of preface all of this by saying I'm not really that smart. So I'm going to need this all explained to me in like, you know, like as if I'm like a grade eight student or something. OK, so, uh, you know, just just really kind of, you know, dumb it down as much as possible <laughs> just for my own personal benefit. All yeah, right. So, no, uh, you know, Kay, as, as the person sort of behind marketing, that's kind of your job in a lot of ways. Right. Is to sort of, hey, sell this to the public, help them understand. Uh, uh, how would you describe it if you were sort of, you know, talking to somebody who might have like a, a you know, high school education? For sure. I mean, r right out of the gate, uh, betting exchange, right? So we, we wanted to be peer to peer. Uh, we want to bring fairness to to the betting space. No bans, no limits. We want to dive into that community ownership as opposed to a centralized entity. Um, in terms of the blockchain tech, uh, you know, it, it is the it is the the future, the way that we're going, right? So uh, for those of you who don't know what blockchain is, it's it's a ledger. It's pretty much a glorified spreadsheet that keeps track of every transaction, right? So the cool thing about that in the context of betting is it provides com 
completely unparalleled uh, transparency uh, compared to uh, alternatives in the space, which are centralized entities where you deposit onto a uh, platform, you bet. Um, don't win too much though, okay? Like we know what happens when you do that, right? We don't want any limits or bans. So um, what this, I, I'm sure your audience is, is, is very familiar with uh, uh, good old limits, but oh, yeah. uh, we want to, we want to decentralize it, right? We, you know, sports betting is, is, you know, the industry has had the status quo for long enough. And now we have the technology to really shake things up, um, have that be peer to peer, fair, uh, way lower, way lower VIG. Um, and, and sports betting, like, like, boxing or any, you know, sports, it, it's a game of inch, inches, right? Like it, it allows you to be much more profitable when you're maximizing uh, due to, you know, reduced fees and commissions and big. Yeah. When you, when you talk about uh, uh, limits and, uh, you know, you said don't win too much, but I, I think a big part of this is there are no limits at the, at the SX bet site, or at least we're not going to be limited on the individual customer level. No. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say one thing about Web3 in general, um, it's it's really community driven. So not only are you not going to get banned or limited at um, SX being an exchange, uh, you can find that liquidity pretty easily. If you want to chuck down a, a you know larger bet, uh, folks are really active in the troll box requesting particular odds. And, you know, it puts the power exactly where it belongs. And that's, a, you know, back in the hands of, of bettors. Um, okay, I want to sort of bring it up here and and for everybody out there that is uh, just listening to us and, and not necessarily watching on YouTube, just uh, for all of you out there, I suggest going to YouTube or at least uh, exploring the site on your own at some point when you have a chance, but I'm going to pull up uh, uh, the site here now. All right, so here we are looking at the looking at the website. I've got it pulled up here, and it looks very much like a typical uh, sports betting website. You know, you've got upcoming events, you've got the menu here on the left side. Uh, you know, a lot of um, you know NHL happening tonight. Here we're recording this on a Monday, so uh, you know we've got we've got a sort of a full NHL slate, and that's kind of what I'm looking at here. I can go to the the in play side and and look at some of the the live uh, wager possibilities. We've got this Chelsea Everton game uh, taking place right now, but there's a few things here that I'm looking at that are uh, very different uh, than than what we might see on a typical uh, sports betting site. So first of all, it's uh, all the crypto markets up here uh, across the top uh, with with live prices, but then also in here too, we've got like an amount of money um, here. And, and, you know, I'm wondering what this is, what this means exactly. So it's, you know, I'm showing $14,785 on the Chelsea Everton game. Is that the current handle on the exchange? Is that what I'm looking at? Uh, yeah, so that's current handle essentially match volume on the, on the platform. If you actually click into that Chelsea Everton game, just click. Yeah. Um, so this is where kind of what's really cool. Um, you actually can see the order book. Um, so if anyone's ever used like a crypto exchange like Binance or Coinbase or anything like that, um, you know that essentially rather than just giving you the price, there's like a live order book that shows all the different bet offers on the platform, uh, as well as actually all the trades too, like like you're looking at through right now. So all every single trade that uh, takes place on the platform is fully transparent. You can actually, um, you know, there's a live ticker tape at the bottom that shows all the most recent bets as well. Um and uh, yeah, so I mean, that just kind of shows you like the unparalleled transparency of uh, of using a betting exchange like SX. Um, wow, that that's pretty cool. I've never sort of seen something like that on a on a sports betting site, especially even just listing the handle uh, right off the bat. But then to be able to go back and look and see, wow, this is what every transaction you know that's taken place on this game over over the course, I guess uh, you know since the pregame market, like, you know, is, is it just listed all the way back to, to as soon as the line opened? Yeah, exactly. Um, and, um, and what's also cool too, is you can actually, you can actually, uh, there's third party. So all of our data, uh, is, is like, we have a public API where all of our data is accessible. So people have actually built third party sites that, um, that give you like alerts when, uh, you know, certain things are bet, um, as well as you can actually see like what, uh, certain betters have, uh, have placed bets on as well. Um, and so like essentially all the data is public. This is totally different than, um, you know, a traditional, a traditional, uh, platform where all this data is fully proprietary and effectively not shown to users. 
Um, and I think that's just like one of the really cool things um, beyond obviously just the order book where you can actually see, uh, you know, all the different bets, uh, betting liquidity that, that that's available. Yeah, yeah. So if I wanted to, so so let's just say, for example, I come on here now. I've, I've moved over. Now we're looking at um, the New York Islanders, New Jersey Devils uh, game taking place uh, tonight. So NHL game happening tonight, and I see you know a few um, offerings. I guess we'll, we'll call them. But you know, I'm looking at the puck line here, and uh, you know, the New Jersey Devils minus one and a half. If I think the Devils are going to win tonight, I might be interested in the minus one and a half here. And I have a, a you know an amount eight hundred and ninety three dollars. Is that kind of the max that I could that I could place on this wager at 3.45 yeah exactly so that that's essentially someone's offer of uh on the other side so you can exactly you you can you can that's effectively the max bet available at that at those odds typically a sports book uh in a way has like an internal order book because there'll be like a, a max bet available at certain odds and then when you do that max bet the odds change um uh whereas i guess effectively we just make all that data fully fully public uh, and so you can actually see like what will happen to the odds as you place different bets. Uh, you can also offer your own bets. Obviously, that's like one of the huge benefits of a, of a betting exchange. Um, it's, it's maybe sometimes easier to visualize with uh, American odds. So if you go to the that gear icon on the top right um, and change to uh, American odds, just gets sometimes a little bit easier to explain. Sure, uh, sure. I mean, I'm a decimal, yeah. you know, guy myself. But hey, you know, you want to sure. you want to talk about America yeah, over just, here? We we can do that. Just purely for descriptive reasons. So yeah. So if you go back to the exchange, um, sorry, yeah, just go back to the uh, the order book. Yeah, um, just, there we go. Yeah. So if you click on the Devils, um, uh, you know, the yeah, you can click anywhere. Yeah, really, look, look at those big odds there. The the three point yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so if you so the, this is really the beauty of SX. So if you want to just take the offer, um, that's effectively what's called a market order, um, and that's just simply taking someone else's bet. Um, and it's kind of like what if you use a sports book, effectively everything is a market order, right? Because they're offering you odds, and then you mm-hmm. you're, you're placing that bet. The beauty of SX is if you actually click on limit, uh, it's just to the right. Yeah, um, this actually lets you set your own odds. So if if instead of you you, you were like, okay, you know, I don't really want plus 245. I actually want plus 275 or even plus 280. You can actually enter, um, you can actually enter, you know, plus 280, plus 275. Um, and essentially, you'll actually see that what's going to happen is you're going to offer minus 275, right? Because the inverse of plus 275 is minus 275. And what will happen is your offer will actually show up on the Islander side of the order book as a, hey, I'm offering. Uh, you know, I'm offering a bet at minus 275. So that's how the odds get tighter on SX. That's effectively the beauty of the exchange is that you can both take bets or, or offer the, offer your own. Wow. Very, very cool. Okay. Um, one more thing I just want to ask you about that is a little bit different um, than, than what we see on, on typical sports books, but is this running chat over here on, on the right side? Uh, uh, who are these people? What are we talking about? What's going on over here? Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. So one of the really cool things too is you can you can actually um, uh, you know uh, effectively offer your own bets um, whenever you want. Like sometimes it's just kind of like chatter of different things. Um, uh, you know, so there's just kind of like different uh, you know people chatting or whatever. But uh, if you scroll up, uh, you can actually see people like uh, creating their own creating their own odds. Um, you know, like there's all sorts of crazy stuff. So. Um, um, I mean, right now it seems like a lot of people just kind of talking about random stuff, but closer to, um, closer to really big events, people will actually go in here and say like, Hey, I'm offering minus 275, which is, uh, you know, better odds than pinnacle or X, Y, Z sports book. Why don't you, uh, if you want to bet the other side, like we can kind of make a deal. So people will negotiate, um, you know, different, different bets with each other. Right. Okay. So this is sort of a, a, a sort of a place for, um, kind of the marketplace to come and chat with each other and, and, you know, talk about things a little bit, you know, and kind of, uh, give it that sort of, uh, not face to face element, but, uh, but a person to person kind of element. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Uh, Pace, 
you've got a lot of experience using this site. Um, you've, you've at least got a lot more experience than I do. Uh, talk to us a little bit about how it's gone for you so far. Yeah, well, I think that uh, when you fly through some crypto terminology like Andrew did at the beginning of this, um, we kind of missed a mic drop moment there. And uh, when I stumbled across SX, um, I jumped on their chat and I don't know what came over me. It must have been the environment. But usually um, when we go talk to a sports book, the last thing I'm going to talk about is whether or not they limit players. And the last thing I'm going to do is talk to them about a community called In Play Live because I don't want them to know anything about um, my intention with said sports book. But yeah, something came over me and I was chatting with your guys' good pal Declan and I just threw it all out there. And uh, I, um, I, never in my life have I come across an experience like this with a sports book. Um, so Andrew mentioned, hey, the wallet's non custodial. Like he just flew over that. That means that you do never, you never need to prove anything about how, when, why, or what you want to get or use your money. It's never SX's money. It doesn't even enter their ecosystem. You are connecting to a wallet <laughs> separately from their system where you own your funds the entire time. Like that is the ultimate mic drop in the sports betting industry imaginable because even the most reputable sports books that we work with, like Pinnacle and Bookmaker, you might not be able to access your money during certain times of the week. For example, Bookmaker doesn't process withdrawals on Saturdays and Sundays and outside of business hours. Number two, you have a withdraw period per time frame that is free. And after that, you have to incur a fee to move your funds out of the account. Sportsbooks are designed to keep your money in their ecosystem so that you continue to play and ideally you continue to lose. That is not the case on SX, which that alone is one of the single most powerful things that I have ever seen in this industry. And when we talk about purifying the betting industry and in play live, holy fuck, guys, you have your money the whole time. It is never SX's money. That's number one. Number two, we obviously touched on this. They don't limit winners, so you can continue to play there, which is just tremendous, and I've been able to uh, enjoy playing here for, for quite a while now. Um, they just ran a tournament. Um, it was called their Arbitra Arbitrum Launch Tournament, and uh, I actually joined a couple weeks late, and I ended up finishing, I think, in 8th or ninth place, and I've got $1,700 uh, USD USDT token coming into my account in the next 24 hours um, for just my typical play, uh, which which was also uh, profitable during that that same time frame. Um, so that was really nice. Shane, with that uh, New Jersey Devils example that you were just listing there, um, uh, Andrew said, hey, let's say you don't like those odds of uh, plus 245. Let's, let's go up to uh, uh, plus 275 and let's offer that. Because of their fee structure, the other side of that wager was actually the best odds listed. So you were getting better odds yourself offering that wager and anyone else looking to take that bet now had better odds than what was currently being offered because of the fee structure. And that's because they're not taking a cut or a significant cut uh, on all the wagers that are being placed. So yeah. it's like true peer to peer betting. We've had exchanges on this podcast before where they talk about the fee structure associated with it. And I don't want to rip an exchange in any way, shape or form, because I, I genuinely believe that that's such a great way to wager, given that it does allow winners and you don't need to worry about some of the stresses that you have in the industry. Well, <laughs> you're now in a position where the the very exchange that you're making the wager on isn't charging you to do it. It's fucking insane. This is the best sports book I've ever come across in my life, and I will do anything to keep it around. Um, now, one Appreciate last that. point that I wanted to touch on relative to exchanges is that I personally don't have experience with exchanges offering live betting. So there's a couple of things there. I know we jumped into that Chelsea game. That was actually a live running um, uh, uh, game with offerings available well live. Well, you guys know I didn't play live in my personal betting journey. I pretty much only wager live. So here I come into these, these games uh, on an exchange where I actually do have the ability to wager, but not only that offer uh, lines myself. So sometimes uh, you know, I might have a hockey game coming in where I'm like, geez, um, all the sports books are offering minus 140 and my strike price for this particular wager is actually going to be minus 120. 
I can offer minus 120 for that wager. And if anyone bites on it, they're getting plus 120 on the other side of it, um, making it the best wager available for the other side anywhere on the internet, anywhere in the world. So there might be some super sharp betters that come in and go, oh, I can arb, they can arb my line that I've offered. But meanwhile, I want the uncovered minus 120 side because my data has told me that that's the strikes, strike point for that particular bet. Um, it's just incredible. Now doing that, of course, you have to make sure that like if a goal scored or anything happened, that someone super sharp doesn't come in and snipe the bet after you've left, you have to, you have to close the offering yourself, um, which I I've been doing, but, uh, just a ton of fun, um, being in this ecosystem. And I think that, yeah, it's really just the beginning. Um, also too, I mean, uh, Andrew, maybe you can touch on some of the tracking and things like that. I I've got, uh, my last month's worth of wagers here available i can actually share those shane if, if you want to see but andrew perhaps you could touch on that and its relevance i totally agree and that's actually the best way to use the site is um if the line is minus 110 minus 110 you and you know you're okay with minus 102 you're effectively offering plus 102 which to uh you know there's a ton of like bots and stuff on the site that they just see positive ev right because the, the true line is plus 100 you're offering plus 102 so they'll take it right away um, and you know maybe arbitrage somewhere else or do do what do whatever. But for you, you just improved your your odds by effectively eight. You know your line by eight cents from minus one ten to minus one hundred two. So um, that is kind of the beauty of of the platform. Um, yeah, this is also really cool too. Uh, this is actually a third party site uh, built by uh, one of the developers in the ecosystem. Uh, we just gave them a small grant and they sort of built this whole thing. It's called uh, SX Dash Lab Bet. Um, again, all the data is fully public, which is really cool. So yeah, you can actually see, um, you can actually, it also breaks it down by sport. Yeah. So you can actually see like, um, oh, this is, this is your, your betting stuff. Yeah. So this is like all of, uh, Andrew's, uh, uh, you know, performance by sport, uh, hockey, basketball, baseball, you've been obviously been crushing it, which is great to see. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, I think if you scroll down too, there's even more stuff too. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, Andrew, sorry, I just took a screenshot of one of the sections on there just so we could we could pop it up. Um, but yeah, this is this is my last month. But yeah, it, it's it it's it anal. Just so you guys know, I didn't build this. The site analyzes it for you. So we're always such a big advocate at In Play Live for tracking our bets, looking at the expected value, and actually deciding whether or not strategies work for us. Well. Um, this is these are my bets from the last month on SX. Well, I can't input my other bets from my other sites that I'm using into here. Um, yeah, I've got I've got this little snapshot of uh, you know kind of saying you know am, is what I'm doing working uh, or not? Which we talk about responsible betting tools in this industry and how they they never really exist. Well, this one sure does, and it's readily accessible and and the data is provided for you in in a matter of seconds. Yeah, it's really cool. I think uh, there's honestly, it's hard to talk about SX because there's so many uh, different things about it. I, I, I really appreciate your comments and it's the best sports book. I, I usually just say it's the most unique sports book or, or most unique for sure because it is, uh, it's definitely the most uh, fair, definitely the most transparent. Um, and we think long term as we get more and more, you know, users to the platform, uh, as well as more developers, that's actually a bigger and bigger part of our sort of focus. Um, the uh, the odds will also become the best in the world. Um, we're right now sort of uh, for pregame, we're we're sort of close to maybe like where Pinnacle is for for certain sports. Uh, but our our in play liquidity and, and odds are uh, sort of still need some work, I'd say. Yeah. So with with the live offerings, you say that those might need a little bit of work. Um, can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Because I I use your live lines, and that's mostly where I wager. They're very comparable and similar to a lot of other sports books. In fact, I I see that there are times where they're identical. Um, uh, meaning that probably some some programmers or whomever is is offering those lines on behalf of uh, um, themselves through SX, which is super cool. Um, but yeah, can you touch on like where you think it's kind of lacking or or what you kind of envision in that area? Yeah, no. So I mean, I, like our goal is to be the best, most liquid place in the world to to bet on sports. Um, and to me, the sort of like non custodial elements, the fairness and the transparency aspects of SX are really actually just tools to get to that ultimate vision of, of effectively having the best, by far the best odds in the world. Like we want to have, you know, 10x, uh, 10x better odds than, 
than anyone. So that's, like I said, less than, uh, we, we call it actually internally the minus 101, minus 101 vision. Um, the idea is like every single line should be minus 101 on both sides, uh, which again, I think should be possible um, just given kind of like the whole uh, you know, technology stack that we've built and also like, which we'll talk a little bit, also like the monetization, all the different things of like how SX is built truly gives us like a fundamentally unique kind of uh, advantage and, and allows us to really achieve that. Um, but yeah, so I think there's a lot of things. Um, so first of all, we building everything on chain is super complex. Um, it's taken us, you know, five years to get the, the product to where it is now. And I still think it's like really far away from where it's going to be. Um, and uh, so the, the big thing for us is um, we have, uh, I would say, often the best pregame MLB, NHL, NBA, and NFL odds, typically, uh, just because we have so many different market makers competing to, you know, offer better and better, uh, better and better odds. But our pre our in play still needs work, which typically that makes sense. Like that's obviously more complex and takes it takes it's a higher barrier to entry for people to, you know, market make uh, live, obviously, than it is compared to, to pregame. Um, so one of the things we're focusing a lot of our time on is is trying to remove that, lower that barrier as much as possible. So let letting people launch their own uh, effectively like market making uh, uh, tools so that anyone can effectively become their own, uh, you know, effectively their own market maker or bookmaker, whatever you want to call it for both pregame and uh, and in game, and uh, and particularly like no code tools. So like we want it so that you don't have to have any technical skills at all. And so that's something that we've been spending a lot of time uh, reaching out to projects in the space to give them grants to build this tooling. Um, and there's a couple that are sort of on the way. Uh, one of them is this thing called Titan Echo, which again it's like an open source project that uh, allows people to launch their own no code market making tools. Um, and effectively, what it does is uh, it allows you to effectively copy other market makers on SX, copy their odds, so that you know allows you to sort of negate having to have your own like odds feed. Wow. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of there's so many different things. Um, <laughs> there's so many different things we could touch on. Um, yeah. Uh, well, okay, I, I want to get into a little bit more of that, but but first, I want to get a sense of of who you're after here to grow this because you know you need you need community involvement, right? Or you need people to participate in this ecosystem to to make it more robust. So, K. How do you go about that? Who are you going after? How do you target them? Is this made for people who um, are already sort of deep into the crypto space? Is that kind of the the idea behind it, or you know, are you coming after after dumb old me? <laughs> well, we, 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 funny you mentioned we've we've got a couple market segments. I mean, uh, you know, obviously being in the in the Web three and crypto space, uh, naturally we're gonna get uh, you know quite a few crypto native users, um, you know, guys that have made a lot of money on their on their Dogecoin um, or, or <laughs> crypto investors in general, right? So um, we have certainly the uh, crypto is a market segment, but we also have a lot of professional sports betters. Um, how a lot of people find us is, you know, they've been limited, they've been banned, they're looking for, uh, you know, a place where they can lay down some volume, um, or just the opportunity uh, to, to market make as well. So uh, the tech is there for, for that audience that's looking to, per, per, you know, per, potentially do this professionally and, and scale accordingly. What's crazy yeah. about what she just said, though, is like if you want to start a sports book, you could just start it on this platform. Just you start don't, it. Yeah. You don't. You don't need the license. You don't need all the things. You can just offer the odds on SX. Like that's crazy. Yeah. So that and that, like that's. I mean, that's true of uh, you know with any betting exchange, really. Like um, I think, like in a lot of ways, the the betting exchange aspect of SX is actually potentially the least unique uh, parts of it, um, because like you know there is traditional betting exchanges that do exist. Betfair obviously be the, the big one. Uh, there's Smarkets. There's all sorts of, um, you know, there's STX now, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I know I know you had them on the pod as well. Um, so I, I'm I'm a huge fan of traditional betting exchanges. Like like you said, I think they are a huge step up from traditional uh, sports books, uh, minus like the really sharp sports books like Pinnacle and things like that. Um, but uh, 
yeah, I, I, like the, the really cool aspects of what we're building to me is like the fact, like we're effectively um, the first on-chain uh, betting platform. So to me, like we're, it's very early in this shift towards uh, on-chain betting platforms. It's kind of like, to me, it's pretty clear that like the, you know, we're kind of in current era of like online sports betting. And then the next, the next era is going to be uh, on-chain betting because it, like you said, it has all these huge advantages just in terms of fairness, transparency, um, better odds. It should have better odds <laughs> um, and, and things like that. So just to add to Kay's answer though, we, for sure, um, we have two very, uh, I would say, well-defined sort of demos of people that use the platform. It's definitely crypto native users who, um, you know, they're already using decentralized finance protocols for fun. They already, you know, they own tokens, things like that. And so SX in a lot of ways is kind of like DeFi meets sports betting. We don't need to go into like what DeFi is, but um, so that's kind of like one segment. And then the other segment is, is definitely people who um, are effectively professional sports bettors who, you know, care about better odds, care about not being limited, um, all, of, all those types of things. Yeah, well, I, I know that our audience represents a pretty sort of broad cross section of those two, um, you know, uh, which so you're definitely, you know, on the right pod speaking to the right people uh, uh, here. Now, everybody is going to want to know, though, OK, so you're not taking a fee. So how are you making money? Yeah, so one of the things we sort of realized, um, uh, or I should say I sort of realized over the last six months um, is what's really cool with what we built is there's actually like three aspects to it. So the first aspect is like the SX bet interface, which is, you know, the consumer facing aspect of it. That's what everyone sort of sees. And that's actually built on this thing called the SX protocol, which is a suite of smart contracts. Um, smart contracts is like a fancy word for um, software controlled wallets is kind of how I would describe it. Um, and that powers the entire backend. So like when I make a bet, if I bet against K, the uh, crypto, or I should say uh, stable coins, because most of the bets are done in USDC. The, the stable coins leave my wallet and they leave K's wallet at the exact same time. And they go into um, this the SX smart contracts. These are effectively, this is effectively a special wallet that is uh, controlled purely by uh, code. It's all the code's open source as well. So that's how you're able to have like this, uh, you know, transparency and, and sort of trust in it. And then, um, and then essentially, uh, the, the, the final aspect of it is we actually built, uh, we actually built our own blockchain. So that's called SX network. Um, and that is what SX protocol is built on and what SX bet is on top. Um, and so one of the things that's really cool. So I guess one of the virtues and <laughs> issues of being so early in the space, because we did start so long ago is, um, we had to create all the underlying infrastructure ourselves. And that, uh, you know, that has effectively meant we had to build our own blockchain, which is SX Network. And um, the way blockchains work is there's essentially a, um, like the way that blockchains work, the way that makes them trustless and decentralized is um, anyone can anyone can use them, but you have to pay like a small gas fee. And that gas fee is determined by effectively the, uh, by, by demand. So like if anyone's ever used like Ethereum or Bitcoin, you know that you pay this like uh, typically pretty small, uh, uh, I mean, sometimes it could be higher uh, transaction fee. And that goes to the validators of the network or some people call them miners. Um, anyways, we don't need to go into like a whole, uh, uh, I mean, I'm happy to go into a long-winded sort of discussion about like what that is. But what's interesting is because we sort of own the underlying chain, um, we can actually... Uh, the platform can effectively monetize at the chain level instead of monetizing at the uh, SX protocol or the SX uh, bet level. Um, and so that means, uh, and like our chain has extremely low gas costs, like sub sub a penny. Um, and so uh, in a way, and, and again, that fee doesn't actually go to us. It goes to uh, the like miners of our network. So these, so these are people who essentially uh, stake SX tokens and by staking tokens, it allows them to secure the network. Um, anyway, so this is a long-winded way of saying that uh, this is like how we sort of plan to monetize long-term is um, uh, by 
building up this chain, which then effectively allows other people to, uh, both ourselves, but then also other people to launch their own sort of uh, interfaces and protocols on top of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like, followed it. I followed it, Shane. Come on. You know, did you paste? I, 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 can you can you can you you know uh, uh, repeat that back to me in a language I might understand? <laughs> uh, well, the, th the thing is, though, is that for for I think for this space, it is relevant because that is the language of of the crypto world, right? Yeah. So, like Andrew, if 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 we wanted to somehow participate in the belief of that system, um, would you? How how could we do that? Yeah, so you can. So actually, let me, uh, so two things. So just to answer your question real quick, um, you can essentially buy SX tokens and then run your own validator. So uh, that effectively allows you to secure the network. Uh, so that's like uh, I guess one way is to essentially be a validator on the network. You earn a yield for doing that as well, um, which is called the staking yield. Uh, and that's again, we didn't pioneer that. That's uh, most crypto projects use some sort of staking model. It's called proof of stake, um, which which is sort of in contrast to proof of work, which is what I think a lot of people sort of, they first hear about crypto. That's what Bitcoin uses. It's like a, a sort of very environmentally, uh, computationally heavy sort of way of securing their chain leads to all that like, uh, you know, environmental waste, all that type of stuff. So proof of stake is different. It just requires you to lock up the tokens to secure the network. Um, to give you kind of like a high level overview on crypto itself though, I think, is, might might be helpful. Um, so crypto to me is really split into like three core groups um, or like categories. So the first category is what people think of as like cryptocurrencies. So, uh, and the funny thing is most people just see that and just assume that's the whole space. And, uh, and it's not. And so cryptocurrencies is really at this point just Bitcoin. Um, and, you know, it's effectively trying to become you know, its own currency <laughs> uh, and, and maybe displace gold or, you know, maybe eventually become kind of its own uh, medium of exchange itself. Um, and that's category number one. Category number two is uh, what Ethereum is. And in a way, it's like a decentralized, uh, decentralized computer or decentralized internet. Um, and it's almost like you can think of it almost like an app store that allows you to create your own apps. Uh, blockchain apps. And that's the final category. And that's actually what got me really excited about the space because back in like 2017 is when you started to see the first like on-chain apps sort of hit the market. It's almost like when you start started to see the first websites hit uh, the internet, people are like, oh, I actually like understand what, sort of understand like the point of the internet now because I see like a website and I can inter interface with it. So in a lot of ways, like to me, on-chain is the new online. It's it's very early though. It's like 1995. I don't know. That's when I was born. But that, that was back when <laughs> back when there was very few websites that were used to be useful or anything like that. Um, and, uh, and and similar to like how like the internet allows you to send and receive uh, data or content uh, peer to peer anywhere in the world for effectively very low cost. Blockchains allow you to send or receive value uh, peer to peer. Uh, to anyone in the world for very low cost. And so, um, and so anyway, so the, that third category is really, really where SX is. It's like blockchain apps. It, um, it sort of extends beyond those first two categories to actually provide, um, you know, usable functionality to users within very specific, uh, use cases. Um, and for the most part, those apps are either built on, generalized computers like Ethereum. Uh, but I think increasingly where the space is going to go is they're going to become more and more like what we've done, which is build out their own sort of, uh, their own sort of uh, app application chain specifically for their use case. Um, and so, um, yeah, so I think that's kind of like where the space is heading. Um, there's going to be thousands and thousands and thousands of different on-chain uh, apps that more and more people will interface with. Um, when we first got started in the space, there was a thousand daily active users of all on-chain apps total in the world. Uh, now there's a couple million. So it's still very, very small, but just in the last five years, it's, you know, thousand next. Uh, and I think it'll continue to, to grow pretty dramatically uh, over the next kind of 10 to 10 to 20 years, which means all sorts of different use cases, whether it's social media um, or DeFi or sports betting, 
that are going to be far more transparent, far more user owned, um, and just, uh, yeah, much more, uh, I guess, trustworthy. So Andrew, I actually have a question spinning off of that. That kind of goes back to the sports book. Um, you talk about the transparency. You talk about the blockchain. Have you guys settled wagers incorrectly before? And how does that shake out? Because my understanding would be that that money's gone. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so what's really cool about what we're building is, um, so to go back to that example, I sort of skipped over it. But when I place a bet with K, the money leaves my wallet, the money leaves K's wallet, and it goes into the smart contract. Yep. Someone still has to send the smart contract, the result of the game, so that right. it knows it knows who to pay out. So what's really cool with what we built is our validators who secure our network are also in charge of sending the, uh, the correct data to that smart contract. Uh, in crypto parlance, it's called Oracle, but you can just think of it as like a data feed. Um, and so our idea is to essentially uh, decentralize the data reporting such that um, there's no single entity that has control over like what games can be reported which way or other. Because in a lot of ways, it's kind of weird that like you're betting against a sports book and then they get to interpret the rules themselves on like what wins or what doesn't. Right. Uh, and so the only real way to like make it fully trustless and transparent is to um, sort of do what, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum did and, and decentralize that responsibility across multiple different things. Um, so, uh, sorry, to answer your question though, that's, that's kind of like what we're working towards. Uh, if thing, but yes, in the short term, if, if something is reported wrong, um, then we just like essentially have to, uh, uh, pay it out of pocket. You guys uh, have or, to eat it. Yeah, exactly. So it's, so, so in that case, of, both sides would have won in theory. Yeah. So, and that's also part of the why it's so like, in a lot of ways, it's kind of insane to build like an on chain sports betting app. Like it doesn't, um, you really have to believe in this like vision of, uh, transparency and, and trust because, um, you have to build the systems to be like incredibly robust because there's no, uh, by having it be non custodial, uh, any error, exactly like you said, the money's fully gone. There's no, uh, no recourse. Of, yeah, there's no recourse. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like a, it's part of the reason why it's so early in this space because you, you really do have to build the whole system from the ground up. Um, uh, I mean, I would love to know if someone can build it not from the ground up. Please tell me. Well, they'll just they'll just copy you. <laughs> yeah, and, and actually, to be honest with you, what, what we want to do uh, long term is actually fully open source. Uh, we've actually open sourced a ton of our stuff as well. Uh, the only uh, again, this is kind of like a you, you sort of have to be in the crypto space to like fully get it. it it's very different than like a traditional centralized business where uh, you know there's like a central operator that um, is essentially trying to extract you know create value and then extract value. Um, with these decentralized networks, they only really work if people have faith and trust in them. And so really core to that is to actually open source all the tech such that if someone, uh, you know, say us, like the founders, we're like, hey, we want to like, we want to just start, I don't know, do something bad. Like we want to, we want to add a 10% fee to every bet. Uh, you have, the only way that SX can kind of uh, truly work and function long term is such that the community could actually relaunch a new version of SX overnight that's called forking in crypto crypto parlance um and uh and that is how you essentially uh keep the platform safe from any central interference is by effectively having it fully open source um uh and uh, in a way fully mobile uh and so that that's how you empower the community to uh effectively have control and have ownership over the platform itself yeah, that's really cool. And I think from like the long story short of what my question was, there is kind of another mic drop moment where it's like they, you got you guys can't go in and void people's bets. The bets settle as as is uh, correctly. And if they aren't, there is the recourse of you guys digging out of your wallets to pay for it yourself, which obviously I, I haven't had to experience. And I'm sure has been hopefully few and far between for you guys. But uh Wagers pay, and you don't need to worry about uh, you know whether or not you caught a broken line or something like that, and 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 if you're going to actually be compensated for that, which is uh, definitely something that isn't the same uh, across the industry as well. So another another huge plus. Yeah, totally. I mean, um, yeah, I, I never totally understood that either because like if you if you do catch if you do bet that and then the, the bet loses, like you don't get recourse on that side. So like it is kind of a weird double standard. Uh, uh, but I mean, again, it's a different model. So, uh, but yeah, I, like what we're building is very, uh, very different for sure. Um, 
it's uh, like I said, it's it's very much community driven. You actually also earn. I, we didn't even talk about that too, but you actually earn SX tokens just as you bet on the platform. Uh, so in a lot of ways, we actually have like a negative fee because like you're not paying any commission, but then you're also earning. Uh, you know, I, th- I think it's like roughly like 50 basis points to 1% rebate effectively uh, as you bet on the platform. And that's incredibly important to us because like this platform only works if um, the community has a stake in it, um, both to keep uh, like essentially, like it only works if the platform is effectively decentralized and that includes ownership of the platform itself. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's like one of the really cool things. That's actually called bet mining, which is something we sort of pioneered in the space. So um, cool. yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it, it sounds fascinating. I, I gotta ask, I, w- I just want to make sure that I am understanding exactly how this sort of works and kind of layers in. So you, you did a great job at sort of explaining the, the sort of three types of, of, of crypto, um, and, and kind of helping me understand. So it sounds like SX created its own blockchain and you sort of started with that as a, as a foundation. And then what you did is you went and built this app, if we want to call SX bet an app on top of the blockchain that you've already created. Um, and so now you have that operating so, in the space and, and sort of, sorry, move, yeah, go ahead. Sorry to cut you off. So we actually did it in reverse. So oh, okay. we built we built the app um, and then we built the, which necessitated building the protocol. And then because crypto is so immature, at least from, it's becoming rapidly, you know, it's rapidly maturing, but, um, uh, we also just like saw a huge advantage to if you if you build the chain, uh, it's almost like a store that owns its own uh, uh, land, right? And then um, the store doesn't, in a way, like it almost becomes like a real estate play uh, yeah. because it can it can charge uh, extremely low margins because it's benefiting from the fact that more more people are coming to the store and that benefits increases the value of the land. Um, that's kind of like one way to sort of think about it. Um, and, um, and then besides that, I think like, um, to be honest with you, I think longer term, what will likely happen is, um, uh, because to be honest with you in the sports betting space, only about like 10% of users actually care about getting better odds. Uh, if you look at like traditionally how betting exchanges op- operate. Uh, and so I think long term SX will actually become more of almost like a development platform where if people want to launch their own, uh, like interfaces, they can essentially plug into this like liquidity super highway that's on SX. Um, and, you know, essentially it allows them to like spin up their own interface if they want, or they could, they can hedge into it. Um, because like, again, like to us, like having the best liquidity is, I think like we're, we're moving towards a world where there's going to be like thousands of different on chain, uh, sports betting platforms, similar to like how right now there's thousands of different online betting platforms. Uh, but there's probably only going to be like one or two main uh, liquidity protocols. Uh, and so like our goal is really to, to win that. Uh, that's kind of like what we're interested in. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, our whole strategy is, I guess, geared towards that. Yeah. So I think you did a good job of sort of with the analogy there that, that you know, uh, a restaurant that owns the land uh, that, that it's on. I think McDonald's did it that way. Um, yep. Yeah, a great, great movie there. The founder kind of does a good job explaining that. All right, off on a bit of a tangent, but a great analogy. Um, so the idea then really is for, um, you know, SX Network, the, the sort of long-term play here to, uh, to, to make money over the long term is to essentially um, offer up the land as a place. And, and you'll be charging, you know, you call it gas, or I guess it's like a gas tax. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. So again, it's also interesting. So uh, the way that works too is... Um, like the way Ethereum and all these different blockchains work is um, that fee is purely dictated by sort of supply and demand. So there's, um, uh, yeah, so essentially, uh, but yeah, to answer your question, I, I do think like the next wave of blockchains is going to be like application specific blockchains. So it's going to be people that built their uh, blockchain app on someone else's blockchain, realize that they can, they can offer a way better user experience if they build out their own infrastructure themselves. Um, and so I think that's kind of like the wave we're in right now with crypto. Um, and to me, it like made a lot of sense because, you know, you can, you can essentially offer uh, much better odds to the user that way uh, and better liquidity mm-hmm. uh, and, and also become kind of like a development platform of yourself, uh, yourself, which I think is really cool. 
so all, all of this, Kay, I'm going to bring it back to you because um, this is sort of, okay, well, where does SX bet go from here? We, we you know, Pace has done a great job espousing the benefits of it and, uh, you know, all, all, all of the sort of great things it offers to us, the sports bettors who are routinely limited on traditional sports betting sites. You know, eventually, you know, we, we end up at a spot where it's very difficult to find places where we can get the money in that we want on, on the wagers we want. Um, so, you know, we as sports bettors uh, really sort of have a, an interest in seeing this thing grow and, and become bigger. But Kay, how do you do it? And, and what's sort of the, the path ahead? For sure. Uh, well, in terms of our, our user base, we're, we're continuously looking to grow and, and scale that accordingly. So uh, we, we want to have the biggest community, uh, obviously. But uh, to, to Andrew's point, uh, the tech stack's there. Um, SX offers a really unique ability to be able to scale. Um, you're able to leverage blockchain technology. You know, Andrew mentioned Titan Echo, um, which could be used for programmatic um, betting, uh, you, building a betting bot and offering. Uh, so I think that the tech's there. It's going to continue to get better over time as well. Like um, Pace, I know you love SX Lab. Uh, developers were, are going to continue to to build on the chain. Uh, we're going to continue to acquire new users, and uh, yeah, hopefully take over the sports betting world. Yeah, yeah for sure. If, if you're uh, if you're the the main bookmakers right now, you know, there's part of this where you're like, holy shit, like look out. You yeah, guys, maybe. I mean, you guys better I, be safe walking down the streets. Yeah, you know, it's interesting though. I actually, I like, I agree and I disagree because I think like if you think of like e-commerce, for example. Um, it definitely took out a lot of like traditional sort of lower end, uh, lower end operators, but then a lot of platforms ended up building out their own, uh, you know, like there's walmart.com. There's all the different things. They they had to. Yeah, totally. Yeah, for sure. So like to me, I'm, uh, I think one of the really, and that's again, why I think actually a lot of our growth is going to become as like a development platform is by like pushing forward this almost, uh, standard for what we think like sports betting should be. Um, and enabling people to integrate it themselves, um, I think is like really, really cool. And in some ways, it allows us to kind of like work with the with the industry. Yeah, uh, from a regulatory level, um, we've we've had some discussions with uh, the AGCO, and we've certainly followed a lot of the regulatory discussion on this podcast. But um, you know, when you do put it in the hands of you know this blockchain transparent model, um, it really takes out the equation of how the operators are allowed to kind of screw people over to a certain extent. You know, voiding one side. Uh, uh, not paying out the other and vice versa. And, and some of the things that you can see from the books that are just like, it's so unbelievably shady. It just can take that completely out of the equation. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely, there's a lot of potential. I mean, I think, um, I think one, sorry, r- one real quick thing I just wanted to add also to Kay's, Kay's comment. Um, I think like for us, there's in a way, there's actually three core uh, customer d- demos. There's the professional betters, the crypto native betters, but then also developers like that to us is really like that third key pillar. Um, and so I think for, uh, and what's really cool is like these developers are building things that have really appeal to these other two groups. Um, and, and because it's like totally new things that you never would have been able to do before. Um, you know what I mean? Like spin up a no code market making bot. That's really cool. Or there's analytics platforms that um, show you incredible amounts of data on both yourself, but then other betters on the platform uh, in real time. So I think like in a lot of ways, like as we build up the development platform, it sort of acts as another way to, to definitely pull users, pull users over. Um, and then finally, I guess one other thing on the, on the crypto native front, um, we did also recently go cross chain. Um, it's probably not as uh, sort of, I don't think your audience would care as much, but essentially what's really cool is you can actually now place bets from other blockchains. Uh, so you don't have to actually like bridge all your funds onto SX network if you don't want, because, um, you know, SX is like a very, I would say relatively niche and targeted, uh, you know, ecosystem. So you can actually place bets from like other chains like Arbitrum, uh, will probably eventually launch on like Solana, uh, Ethereum, all those different types of things too. So very I think cool. we're, yeah. Um, so it's Especially just, if you do a tournament each time, I'm yeah, sure. exactly. <laughs> uh, and we actually, we actually, we, we we're getting grants from these other chains as well to to deploy, and so uh, and those grants are again one hundred percent going back to to users. Amazing. Uh, so yeah, it's been it's been cool. 
Don't you, worry, Pace. There'll be there'll be plenty of more uh, plenty of more tournaments well, for you to. Well, yeah. To why don't we Why don't we wrap up, Kay? Why don't you touch on some of the things for like the InPlay Live community that uh, number one we can offer them and and what that could look like. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we we've got something special uh, for you guys here at InPlay. Uh, we have our our standard welcome offer. Sign up. You want to complete enhanced verification, you get a $20 free bet out of the gate and a $1,000 welcome bonus at a 2% unlock rate. Um, we're, we're throwing you guys an extra $500 uh, for in-play guys, 2% 2, 2 unlock rate uh, to really maximize those profits. Um, yeah, that's amazing. So would you just enter a code somewhere? How, how does that work? Yeah, so when you sign up for SXBet, um, just type in in-play as your promo code. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll ideally have some some other exciting stuff coming down the pipes for you guys. That yeah. sounds awesome. Well, thank you guys uh, so much for offering that to us. I think uh, you know a lot of our members will really appreciate a bonus like that. A eh, pace. I mean, it's so unusual to, <laughs> to to have that kind of. Usually, when we hear about bonus offers from sports books, it's like you know kind of back up against the wall. All right, let me get out my glasses so I can read all the fine print on this thing, you know, to make sure yeah. I know the rules and, you know, and that my money isn't going to be locked up in some, you know, shady sports book, you know, offshores. Um, and, and I'm going to actually be able to get my money out of this thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know you guys have been around for a couple of years, but this is the start of something super exciting for us and our members. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, no limits, no fees. Uh, 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 don't need to worry about whether or not you're going to get paid. And then on top of that, a fifteen hundred dollar bonus if you use the code in play. It's just like a total dream. Um, that's fifteen hundred US too, guys. So I know a lot it, of us are, are in Canada. Go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, and also uh, it unlocks as you bet. So if you bet, essentially, the way it works is if you bet a thousand dollars, you immediately get. Uh, or I guess when the bet settles, you get a twenty, you get twenty dollars of free bets uh, unlocked immediately. Um, and when you use the free bets, essentially what it is, it allows you to place a bet without having to put up your own stake, and you get all the profits from any free bet. And those go directly into your wallet. Uh, so there's no like, uh, you know, secret thirty six x rollover requirement or something to actually like withdraw or do whatever. Um, and and on the bonus side of things, like typically speaking, if you accepted a bonus like that, the funds that you actually have in the betting ecosystem you wouldn't be able to touch uh from a withdrawal standpoint because you have to re uh, you know complete the bonus rollover requirements in in sx you can leave uh pull all your money out and just leave the bonus sitting there uh with no with no negative impact to you whatsoever yeah i mean you like you should have control over funds it's just these really basic things <laughs> that don't exist in the industry so yeah guys this is awesome yeah, uh, what a novel concept there. All right, well, uh, yeah, th this is going. I'm sure we could just chat your ear off for for you know several hours here because I, I still got a whole bunch of questions, but we are running out of time, so I'll just uh, we'll, we'll leave it there um, for everybody out there in the community. That that bonus code again, if you want to sign up, is just simply in play, all lowercase. Nice and easy. That's right. There we go. Perfect. If you mess it up, I'll catch it. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> uh, lowercase in play when you sign up. Any issues, uh, any questions, just drop it in the chat. Uh, if you're not crypto native or you, you know, have never uh, uh, operated in that space, uh, just let us know. We're happy to, to hop on a call and onboard you if you need or, or we've got a lot of uh, uh, how to tutorials. So any questions, let us know. We're here for you. Uh, so you can get those those better odds and that great bonus. No, oh, I, I look forward to watching some how-to tutorials on uh, it's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to watch them a few I, times. I've watched a few myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Kay Carson, head of marketing, Andrew Young, co-founder of SXBet and the SX Network. It's been a pleasure having you both on. I've learned a ton. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. All right, and to everybody out there, millions of sports bettors around the world, till next week, keep beating those books. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Behind the Lines. Remember to like, download, and subscribe. We are on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and everywhere you get your podcasts. Have a betting story or want to be featured on our podcast? Drop a note in the comments below. And if you want to join in Play Live, use promo code Behind the Lines.